Hello everybody, this is Kevin Ring, and today I'm going to give you another tutorial for the Barco Event Master toolset. Uh, today I'm going to use an E2 Gen 2, and the topic of this conversation and tutorial is going to be binding a user key to a source. This is a very advanced workflow, but it can become incredibly handy if you know you're going to be needing to make alterations to several presets after you've already created them. So just to say that I did, I will create a widescreen destination. And just as that form of review, I will create a 600 pixel overlap, assuming it's a two projector blend. And I will center justify the blend and add a few layers. I do have a video on my channel about setting up a widescreen destination. So if you would like some review on what I just did, uh, that is available here on the channel as well. Uh, for a user key to really be impactful, I do need a few sources. So I will create four, count them four, single link uh, sources using SDI connectors. For the most part, my configuration is done. Make sure you save all, save often. Uh, and I can now start working with user keys. As a friendly reminder, we can always change our view mode of our sources from list view to thumbnail view and if we're working in thumbnails then we are able to apply thumbnails as a jpeg or a png uh, here are mine i just these are just made in photoshop um microsoft paint i think elgato or stream deck has a really good thumbnail generator as well they don't have to be anything fancy in case you were not aware, a user key is a stored parameter of a layer that we're able to apply elsewhere. They are very, very handy. I'll put myself over here for right now. They're very handy and very useful for programming. What I could do, for example, is I come over here to the user keys tab, which is right next to my face, <laughs> and uh, I could select all the parameters that I wish to store of a layer. Uh, if you come from a spider workflow, they would call this a treatment. So unlike a preset, which is a complete snapshot of composition, a user key is a specific parameter or parameters of a layer that we can apply to other layers. I'm going to sip some coffee. Please excuse me. Mm. Oh, caffeine. Great. So for example, as we already know, maybe I want to make sure that all of my pips and layers are going to be this exact size and position in the upper left hand corner. If I want to store that as a quote unquote hotkey, uh, we would use a user key. So in this scenario, I want to store position and size. So I will select position and size under the user key parameter on the, uh, on the right hand side, and I'll hit save to new user key. And I'm going to call this right pip. Just to test my workflow, I can now, <laughs> I spelled right. I can apply my user key in two ways. Number one, uh, with the layer selected and the user key selected, hit apply selected. Other option is I can drag the user key onto the desired layer. And now it will snap to the exact parameters of this layer as I stored it. Great thing is this can apply to any other layer now. So whenever I start programming all of my looks, I can always guarantee that this layer will be in the exact same size and exact same position. So that's just a review of user keys. We know that already. Uh, one of my personal favorites, of course, is doing a border and drop shadow. So I'm gonna turn a border on. I'm gonna turn a drop shadow on. I'll make that shadow a little bigger. Great. And now I can create a user key to quickly turn the border and shadow on. So I'm going to make sure that only border and shadow are selected because I don't care about the size and position of this one. I just want the border information. And I'm going to hit save to new user key. And this will be border and shadow. Cool. I can bring in another layer now and apply the border and shadow. I can bring in another, oh, I don't have any more layers. But I can bring in an additional layer. And sure enough, I can apply border and shadow. Now, whenever you're working with border and shadows, you typically want a user key that can turn the border and shadow off. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Maybe you change your mind. 
So what I can do is I can turn the border and shadow off manually. And now here's where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna store the border and shadow information of this layer. Just so happens the border and shadow is turned off, but I'm actively gonna save that parameter. So I'll call this no border, no shadow. I'm having a hard time typing this morning. No border, no shadow. So now I can turn border shadow on, border shadow off. All right, cool. Now, there is another workflow that we can do, as I mentioned, which is the whole point of this video. And this is tying or binding a user key to a source. As you may or may not be aware, on the left-hand side in our input resources pool, we have what is the input connector, and then we have the source file. In order for a source to be shown in the Event Master toolset, a source file has to be created. This is done for you automatically. Um, this is that little uh, text underneath it. So SDI input one is generating source number six, which is SDI input one dash six, which is how we treat the system on the back end. Uh, if you do syntax programming, that's very important as well. Now what's cool though, is I can actually create more than one source per input connector. What? I know. Um, I can do it two different ways. If I hit the blue plus button, I will create a new source directly from the input connector. If I hit this piece of paper here, I'm going to make a duplication of the current source file. So I'll create a new raw source and I'm going to drag that into my preview page. And if I go to the contextual adjust tab in the upper right hand corner, uh, everything we've been doing so far has been a layered based adjustment. However, we are able to adjust the direct source itself. To do so, we actually scroll up on the properties page here. And we see at the very top, we have the option to choose the default parameter, which is the layer, or we can have this be a source adjustment. Ooh, ah, e. So under source adjustment, you'll have things like um, a sizing adjustment. So maybe you want to uh, zoom in on a source. Uh, we also have the ability to change the aspect ratio. So maybe I want to make this 4-3, and then I can change the uh, horizontal size to compensate for it. So I can have a 4-3 version of the source. So rather than having to apply a user key that does the mask and the alterations, I can actually make this source 4x3. If I hit save source, I'll call this 4-3 SDI1. And now, I can bring in the original source or the new 4.3 source. Now note the border and shadow is still enabled. That is correct because it's a layer property, but just turn that off with my user key that we made. Very cool. So that's of course just a little bit of uh, dealing with the actual sources themselves. But what the whole point of this video is, is I can actually now take a user key and permanently tie it to a source. So I've created a new version of my SDI source. I'll drag that into my preview page. I'll go to the source adjustment and we have this tab here called bind to user key. So I'm going to bind this to the border and shadow. I'll hit save source. Now you only see this the next time you bring the source into the uh, programming page. So I'm gonna rename this one now, border and shadow. Now watch what happens when I bring this source in. It will instantly apply the border and shadow for me. Nice. So let me go ahead and create three presets with this. Cool, everyone's happy. Now here's a scenario. What if we had to make an alteration to the border and the shadow? It turns out that the customer or the client determines they do not like the border and shadow, but maybe you've already built 99 presets. With a different workflow, you would have no choice but to now go in and overwrite every single preset with the updated parameter. This new workflow here of binding user key to a source could save you a lot of time. Because now what I can do, so here's all my complete presets. These are true complete presets. I'm gonna to go to one of the layers. I'm gonna to go to the contextual adjust tab and I'm going to make an alteration to the border and the shadow. I'll make it a little thinner. I'll make it yellow and I will make my shadow blue. Beautiful. Client says to me, Kevin, that is the most beautiful border and drop shadow I've ever seen in my entire life. 
I want every window to look just like that. Cool. Downside though, is I've already built my presets. So I have to now go back in and update these presets. But luckily I used a source that was bound to a user key. So now what I can do is if I select this layer and I overwrite my user key of border and shadow, let's see what happens. So I'm going to overwrite with border and shadow selected. And then just to test this, I'll clear my window out. I'm now going to go back to my presets that I already built, have not modified these presets. Let's see what happened. Sure enough, these presets are now using the new updated user key because this preset is using the border and shadow source. Thus, it's automatically referencing the new user key and having the automated updates for me without me having to do a single thing. Now, obviously this workflow works best if you plan for it in the beginning. Um, hindsight's 2020, as they say. That said though, if you're only using a source one time or in one place, you are able to come in retroactively and bind a source, um, the source to the user key. Just note, a source can only be bound to one user key at a time. So depending on what you're doing, you probably will want to be making duplications of your source. Uh, I really hope that this workflow has been helpful for you and your programming in the Event Master Toolset. As always, for uh, my fun videos, please uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that good YouTube stuff. Uh, and I hope to see you around soon. Happy, happy programming. Cheers.